Are you tired of finding the same boring projects when searching for new things to work on? Today, we'll be going over three not boring projects for beginners to put on your resume. Each project will have starter code that explains what we're doing. At the end of each section, I'll go over some additional features that you can implement on your own to get it ready to put on your resume. In the first project, we'll be implementing CREP, which is a command line utility that searches input files for a pattern. For example, if we try to search for the word John in this text file, it will return every line where the word John is present. We could also pass in dash n to print out the line where the pattern was found. And we could pass in dash i to ignore the case of the pattern. Grep also accepts regex. In this example, we search for any word that starts with the letter n. So let's start implementing this. We'll use a built-in library called argparse to parse command line arguments. First, import the library then instantiate an argument parser and give it a description. Then to access the arguments, we'll call parse args and save it to a variable. We don't have any arguments yet, but if we run our code with the dash dash help flag, we can see our description printed out. We can use the dash dash help or dash h flag to produce automatically generated information about how to use our tool. Now let's start adding some arguments. We'll add one argument for a pattern and another argument for a file. Let's print these arguments out for now to see what we get. Running the code with dash dash help shows that we have two new positional arguments, pattern and file. Now we can run the file with these arguments and we'll have access to them in the code. Let's create a function called grep, which will take in a pattern and a file, which is entered through the command line. Since we're using regex, we'll use the regex.compile function to turn our string into a regular expression object. Next, we'll try to read in the file that was passed in as a command line argument. We'll call read lines to get a list of each line in the file. If we can't find the file, we'll tell the user and we'll return from the function early. If we can find the file, we'll loop through each line and try to search for the pattern in the line. If we find the pattern, we'll strip off any white space from the right side of the string and we'll print out the line. Now we can test the function out. This is the text file that we'll be searching through. Now we can search this file with any string. Our code will take in the parameter and print out the lines where there's matches. Our code also accepts regex. Here, we're searching for any word that starts with n. Now let's start adding in new optional parameters. To make a parameter optional, we'll prefix the argument name with a dash, and we can use the action field to set the parameter as true or false, depending on whether or not the parameter was passed in through the command line. These two lines add two new parameters, dash i and dash n, which correspond to ignoring the case of the word and whether or not to print out the line number. For now, let's just print out the arguments to see what we get when we run the code. If we pass in dash i or dash n as a command line argument, the argument will be true. And if we don't pass it in, the variable will be false. Now we can use these arguments in our function. Let's start by passing them in. Implementing ignore case is simple. We can pass in flags to the compile function that controls how it compiles the regex object. If the ignore case argument is true, we can set the ignore case flag to true. Otherwise, we leave it as false. Then we can pass in the flags to the compile function. To implement printing out the line number, we can use the enumerate function and pass in the list that we want to loop over. Enumerate returns a tuple that gives us access to the current position of the list and the item in the list. We can optionally pass in where the index should start from. In this case, we want the index variable to start at 1. Then we can check if the line number argument is true. If it is, we just print out the index returned by the enumerate function before printing out the line. Now we can test the new code. Let's search for John and ignore the case. We can also pass in dash n to print out the line number. Now we'll go over some additional features to implement for this tool. First, implement a new argument that will display the total number of matching lines. Implement a context flag that shows a few lines before and after each match. Print out lines that don't match with the dash v flag. Allow users to save the results to a CSV. Finally, allow users to search through multiple files at once and display some summary statistics associated with the search. A shell is a computer program that allows users to interact with an operating system through a command line interface. For example, if you enter a terminal and type in echo followed by a string, it'll print out the string back to you. ls will list all the files and folders in the directory. cd will change the directory. cat will list out the contents of a file. And touch will create a new file. In this project, we'll be creating our own shell, which will take in user input and run commands. To implement our shell, we'll create a while loop that asks for user input. For now, we can just print out the input. 
We'll also check if the input is exit, and if it is, we can break the loop so it doesn't go on forever. Now let's run the code to try it out. Right now it's just printing out what we enter, and we can type exit to break the loop. Now let's parse the commands. We'll start by splitting the user input, which will give us a list of commands separated by spaces. The first element of the list will be the command, and the remainder of the list will be any arguments that follow the command. First, let's implement echo. This takes in the arguments that follow the echo command, joins them into a string, and then prints them out. We'll check if the user entered echo, and if they did, we'll call the function with the arguments. Now let's test it out. If we enter echo, any arguments passed after echo will just be printed out. Now we can implement ls. ls will list all the files and directories in the given path. If we're able to find the path, we'll call the listDir method from the OS library and join everything together separated by new lines. And we'll let the user know if the path can't be found. Then we'll check if the command is ls, and if it is, we'll call the function. Now if we enter ls to the shell, it'll list out all files and folders in the directory. Finally, we'll implement cd. cd takes in a path and then changes to that directory. We'll call the chdir method and enter the path to try and change the directory. And again, if we can't find the path, we'll let the user know. Now we need to check if the command is cd. If the user doesn't enter any arguments following cd, we'll default to changing to the home directory. If we don't have an implementation for the entered command, we'll just let the user know. Now let's test the new command out. We could type ls to list all the files and folders, cd to change the directory, and then we can enter ls again to list all the files in this directory. And entering a command that we haven't implemented will let the user know. Now let's go over some additional features to implement. First, implement some other common commands. Allow users to press the up arrow to access previously entered commands. Implement chaining commands together with the pipe operator. Finally, implement tab completion for commands and file names. The final project will be reporting stock information to the user from command line inputs. We'll start by importing the Y Finance library, which we'll use to get stock information. To get information from a specific ticker, we call yf.ticker. Then we can access the info and print it out. Now let's change this into its own function that can take in any ticker and print out information associated with that stock. For this video, we'll just print out the company's name, the current price, the market cap, and the summary, but there's loads of information we can display to the user. Now we can call the function with any ticker and get information for that company. Now we'll implement a while loop that asks the user to enter a stock ticker and uses the input in our function. We'll allow users to enter Q to break out of the loop and we'll convert the input to uppercase. If the user input is Q, we'll break out of the loop. Otherwise, we'll pass the input to the function. And if the Y Finance library throws an exception, we'll let the user know that there was an error. We can run the code and enter stock tickers and get information related to the stock. For the additional features, allow users to enter multiple tickers and compare them. Create visuals using matplotlib. Incorporate news APIs to report headlines about each company. Allow users to enter a date range to get historical data. And finally, allow users to export the data to a CSV. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, please consider following me on these other platforms.